On this day in 2001, 2,996 Americans died in the Twin Towers. This was a turning of the mind of America. Now, a lot of people have compared it to when John F. Kennedy was assassinated, everybody kind of knowing where they were when he was assassinated. And I remember where I was when the Twin Towers came down. I actually was able to see it because I was in, I think, uh, fourth grade. And I was in a classroom and there was this TV that was wheeled in. It's back in the days before even DVDs. Um, kind of the right at the end of the, well, right at the end of the VHS era. And being in fourth grade, I saw the second plane hit. And... For some reason, that did stick in my mind, what I was doing, where I was, how I was sitting, how I was looking at the TV, everything. It was the shifting of the consciousness of America. For so much of our history, we felt untouchable and isolated. We felt like wars happen out there, not here, or we can be affected out there, but as long as we stay here, we're, we're safe. 9-11, no matter who you think did it, because um, there's a lot of theories. For the average American, it felt like something that was taken here that should only happen somewhere else. It was a little bit of a wake-up call, a terrible one, where people lost their lives, who suffered, firefighters for decades after, were suffering ailments that you only get from an attack on towers like that and planes running into them and all the health problems of everybody else that was affected in new york at that time that was near that place because of the ash because of the chemicals there was a remarkable amount of suffering produced from what happened on 9 11 in 2001 for many people and that's no less than <laughs> it's actually far greater than America realizing that we're not untouchable because that lesson costs so much pain, agony and suffering and death. And whether or not you agree with what we did after, it was a turning of our minds. And I think today, before I explain the ritual that I'm about to do and do the mantra that I'm about to do, Think about where you get your own love and compassion from. Where do you learn it from? Most people, you know, their parents. Um, but also there's oftentimes other individuals that we learn our love and compassion from. For some people, it's Jesus Christ. For some people, it's Krishna. For some people, it's Siddhartha Gautama, the historical Buddha, and all the other Buddhas. For some people, it's Narayana. For some people, it's uh, Muhammad. The supposed, the supposed last prophet, who I actually doubt would have approved of what was done on 9-11. Whatever you learn from your parents, try to understand the source of that love and compassion if you receive love and compassion from them. Even if it's not a spiritual religious person, even if it's not somebody like the Pope or an avatar or anything, where do you draw your compassion from? For some people who are completely atheistic, it might just be like Martin Luther King or Nelson Mandela or Alan Watts. Sometimes it doesn't have to be religious or spiritual. Sometimes the love and compassion that you learn and draw from can be from figures that need not put their doctrine upon you or you need not follow that doctrine. Sometimes it's from just family members. No, no one of these places we draw our compassion or love from is any less significant than any other place. No matter how exalted a figure is. So ask yourself, where do you draw your love and compassion from? How can you increase it? How can you aid people in the specific way that you are as a human being? Can you increase that love and compassion? 
I've de I've decided to do a little bit of a ritual, and I'm going to use a mantra. It's going to be Om Namo Amida Butsu, and then Namo Amida Butsu. Repeat, 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 and then Om. So Amida Buddha is the Buddha of infinite, infinite light and infinite life, light and life. I've known about this Buddha for a very long time, though connecting to him is not my specialty. It's a figure I've been drawn to recently, but very light and life-oriented. In this Buddha, many people believe in Pure Land Buddhism, just repeating that mantra um, can aid the suffering of all beings. I think that is appropriate. I'm accustomed to mantras, though I'm not accustomed to this Buddha, but I have been connecting to him recently. At any rate, I think that is good for me to step out of what I usually do, because what most people believe is not usually what I believe. So perhaps we can take this journey together while I'm doing this mantra, paying attention. Perhaps you can even say the mantra with me if you don't want to. Perhaps you can mute it and still focus on the video and say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever and ever. Amen. I know that prayer. I know other mantras. I consider myself Hindu. And my favorite mantra is... Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om That means I bow to the Lord who lives in the hearts of all. No matter what you say, it's important to, you know, maybe you're not in the United States, maybe you're not an American. Maybe you're an American who doesn't really see this as a significant thing or significant date. Or perhaps we can all take a minute to really think about how we can be more loving and compassionate and how other people are suffering in terrible ways, perhaps way worse ways than we are. Perhaps we could take this day of self-reflection and perhaps increase compassion in some way. Maybe there's something little you can do for somebody else. It doesn't have to be big. Perhaps there's... A reflection you can have that you usually don't reflect upon. So I'm going to do the mantra in just a minute. So I'm going to be lighting this blue candle, calming. Blue is a very calming color. I'm going to be dedicating it to, to the people who died in the Twin Towers of 9-11. And I'm going to be anointing this candle with the Crown of Success oil that I have that works very well. This is what it looks like. I buy it off Amazon. <laughs> you don't need to buy it from anywhere special. But I will be saying this mantra before uh, the Buddha on my um, shrine right now. And that Buddha is going to serve as Amida Buddha, uh, the Buddha of infinite light and life. But go ahead and join me. And just know that if this isn't really your thing, perhaps you can say your own prayers and reflect in your own way. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu Om. Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu Om. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Om. Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Om. Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Om. 
Namo Amida Botso, Namo Amida Botso, Namo Amida Botso, Om. Namo Amida Botso, Namo Amida Botso, Namo Amida Botso, Om. Namo Amida Botso, Namo Amida Botso, Namo Amida Botso, Om. Namo Amida Botso, Namo Amida Botso, Namo Amida Botso, Om. Namo Amida Botso, Namo Amida Botso, Namo Amida Botso, Om.
Amida Buddha. We ask for the ending of suffering to all beings and hope for the enlightenment of all beings and to find the strength to be kind, loving, and compassionate at all times. Namo Amida Butsu. I bow to you, Amida Buddha, Lord of light and life, and hope you will hear our prayers today. Namo Amida Butsu. Om.